Okay, we're upgrading an iMac 2008 uh, model, changing the hard disk in it, and what we want to do is put in one of these uh, SSD drives. Now, these SSD drives are two and a half inches, and of course the uh, original drives are three and a half inch. To save us telling you how we opened the iMac, we've been watching a really good YouTube video uh, by a chap called uh, Ron Holm One. Uh, so just have a quick look. You need to look for that guy, Ron Holm One, and he's made this video called iMac Aluminium Hard Drive Upgrade Part One, and there's also a Part Two. However, when he made the video, all he was doing was taking out his old three and a half inch drive and replacing it with another one. Uh, we've wanted to put in a new SSD drive in the iMac and um, we're actually encountering some additional issues which Ron's otherwise brilliant video doesn't cover. Uh, namely, that when you get to the stage in his videos of taking out the uh, old hard drive and these are the two connectors which uh, come off the two connectors here on the old hard drive, uh, Apple in their infinite wisdom um, have made this cable, which is the data cable, the data SATA cable, too short. And uh, they've made it so that it literally sits in the correct position, and this is the power cable, they sit next to each other, for a three and a half inch drive. Well, typically, uh, one of the ways that you put a two and a half inch drive into a three and a half inch drive space is with these kinds of uh, metal wings, which we've bought and stuck onto our drive. But uh, if we stick this drive in, in the orientation of the Mac drive, and I line it up where the holes need to go, we've not put in the pins yet that Ron talks about in his video. There's absolutely no way these connectors, I'm pulling quite hard, these connectors are not going to reach those sockets. So that's the problem you'll encounter if you're trying to put an SSD drive in with brackets in place of a normal three and a half inch drive. So uh, that's the problem we're trying to crack. Okay, the solution we've come up with is, uh, it's not a very elegant solution, but we've got one of these plastic trays. And what's crucial about these trays is that they've got these uh, lugs on them, which of course black on a black background, not going to help matter as much, but do it that way around. Look, you can see just uh, here, these little tray holders, and what they have the benefit of doing is they hold the new SSD drive flush to the top of this tray. The uh, hard disks, the three and a half inch hard disks, sit in the Mac in this orientation and uh, that puts the sockets uh, at the very top of the drive that way round. And so we want to get our SSD in a similar position and so we're using one of these trays to do that. So uh, what we've done is, rather than fixing the SSD to the tray first, what we've gone and done is we've plugged our two sockets into the SSD drive and just left it loose for a moment. And uh, the, here comes the uh, unelegant solution of it all, is that we have, first of all, put the thermal connector underneath the SSD drive. And the reason I've done that is because it sat here, on the three and a half inch drive which was recessed down from the very top here and um, whereas the SSD drive has no recessing it is it's just a flat surface and my worry would be that if we put the thermal uh, sensor on the top of here it will rise it up too high against the back of the screen so I've stuck that underneath the SSD drive just there uh, and if I can get Tommy uh, my friend who working with me to hold the camera uh, just there for me uh, our inelegant solution is really this going to be this simple. We've decided to simply put the plastic tray in at an angle, which um, what's going to and we're not going to be able to reuse the um, this arm here. This is the uh, arm that came off this position here. Uh, which was originally connected to the drive. Uh, if you watch Ron Holmes' video, who talks about this spring loader, we're not going to reuse that, and neither are we going to reuse the little lugs that come out the side of the drive. Uh, I'm working on the premise that actually, with the cables being tight up here, uh, holding the drive quite securely, and the fact that the 
the when you put the drive into the holder here it actually makes the whole thing quite stiff in this position this this corner here is is quite firm up against there and similarly the corresponding corner against that one um, and of course when the screen lays down it lays flat on top so there's not going to be any play these plugs are very firm on here and the drive is light so the reality is unless you're you know driving your iMac around in some rally car going over a load of bumps I don't think it's going to cause any problem whatsoever uh, what we're going to do in a minute is we're just going to drill some new holes here and here so we are going to screw our SSD drive to the two sides of the plastic tray okay well after trying to drill some uh, fruitless holes in the side of the plastic tray here uh, we also realized that the way this tray has been designed is it assumes your SSD is around the other way and uh, the clearance on the side of the SSD for holes is such that when you don't have it that way round but this way round which is the way we need it so it lines up with the connectors there's no way that you could drill extra holes in this plastic and reach the uh, holes on the side of the SSD without fraying the plastic so we've ended up having to uh, glue it uh, we've just put a couple of dabs of glue uh, in these bottom corners here you can see it's black on black so you can't see it but anyway we've just a couple of dabs of glue underneath the SSD in these two locations just to hold it in this tray and the tray itself because the cables now are quite tensioned on the drive the drive sits inside these two plastic grooves here and because the whole tray is kind of uh, you know rammed up against here and here as tension points it's pretty good. I mean, it's not, I mean, it moves if you force it like that, but, you know, its natural position is to spring back into that place. And uh, we're quite confident that when we bring the lid down and put it on top, it's just going to hold it in place. It ain't going anywhere. This is not a heavy device. Um, what we did do before we glued it all up is we did put the screen back down earlier, reconnected its connectors and turned the Mac on to make sure it would recognize the drive. Uh, we didn't want to run the risk of putting all this in, gluing a drive that's worth £300 um, and then find the Mac couldn't read it. Uh, so we did do a bit of a test before we gone to this stage of gluing. But uh, that's how we've solved getting an SSD drive in the back of this iMac. One of the other things uh, which is not to do with the hard drive that we discovered on this model iMac from 2008 is that the power connector from the display we've managed to prop the display up against the wall here and this power connector comes down here uh, directly plugs into this power unit board this is the board that Ron in his video says we must be careful not to touch for charge uh, on Ron's Mac he had connectors somewhere over here he was undoing in the middle of his video we found that this Mac didn't have that which was quite handy because it's meant we've been able to leave this cable connected uh, because it's got enough slack in it so that we can lay the screen sideways up against the wall there and we're working on the Mac sideways and that meant we've only had to undo the uh, connector that was here uh, and then the tiny little one that he used the plastic um, tool for just there so there's only two to undo in this model Mac and then we found we were able to leave that one in which has actually turned out to be a real blessing uh, but pretty much everything else in Ron's video um, matches the experience we've had working on this one.